Oh yeah, gentlemen, you come out to play. Just a bit, yeah, like, Tibby's doing their bed, I've seen you up the stairs with a bottle. Oh, it's a call next to ten next for a bottle. Well, it's a half bottle, really. Tibby likes in a Glenfiddich in our bed. Oh, she likes a Glenfiddich in our bed, does she? <laughs> oh, well, one thing would be an improvement in you, Norman. I want to get my bath signed. <laughs> Aye, as long as I'm back for Tuesday. <laughs> well, here we are, Albert Hall, Norman. I was reading some white Frank Sinatra was here this long ago. No, no, Norman, that was neither Albert Hall. Well, there's another in this, then. It's SQ for. Robin Frist for drink, Norman. Quite right, too. <laughs> no, Andy, have you got a bottle on you? No. Oh, well, you better not do it again. You can the rules by this time. If you haven't got a bottle, you're not getting in. There's are no concessions for senior citizens. No, no, Norman. Yeah, you are not allowed in here unless accompanied by a ten-year-old. I believe they've got Robin Galloway for their company. But why did a comedy bother getting him? Well, if you take Robin Galloway's company, you get the band a lot cheaper. Ah. Well, I don't see Robin Galloway. Well, they must have surely last two to pay the extra. Well, it was fairly worth it. <laughs> yeah. You see Wally Smith fiddling away there? Yeah. For that technique. It's all on the rest. Never used his elbow at that. No wonder. He used to save his elbow for the glag at that. Nancy Patterson dancing? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> You ain't said a fancy for Nancy. <laughs> I've seen the name of her. <laughs> well, I will say, Nancy's real left on her feet. Go to her feet, the only life thing about her nowadays. <laughs> Your passout, lads? Oh, no. Well, if you're coming back in, you'll need your passout. This is your stump, say, Alex. Defence Egg Station, June 1944, Grade 2. It's a funny thing to use for a passout for a dunce. Well, but it doesn't matter for it says, Norman, as long as Abbey can it means. Oh, I suppose that would be right. Oh, as long as Abbey's graded the same, like. Every day I find the wood hug with the island. The best part is I somewhere else. It's never for I am. Well, it's bound to be somewhere else, Norman. Funny part it doesn't hear you at its half down flying start. Is that a Christmas tree in the middle of the road? That's near Christmas tree. That's a bobby. <gasps> well, that's terrible, that. A bobby flashing in, in the middle of the road. You should lock and fill up for that. I'll tell you something else, Norman. That's near your bobby. That's near Louis Buckin. <laughs> that's an in a boat coming. Halt! Oh. Who goes there, friend or foe? What's that he said? He's speaking in Gaelic. Ah. I say again, friend or foe. He's asking if it's friend or foe. Well, I'm the king, we've never met the man. Say friend. Friend, but near close friend. Advance friend and be recognised. But why would you recognise us? You didn't even ken us. If I are you on the wine, what are you doing standing in the middle of the road? I am a police officer and I'm directing the traffic. But here, it's no you that's asking the questions, it's me. Explain yourselves. What are you doing at half past eleven and hugging the next in Dr. Tara? That is very suspicious behaviour. I'm trained to notice their things. You're in the hands of the professionals here, Paul. It had on Louis Buckins, or, or constable. Eh? What are you? I've never seen you before. I'm Louis's replacement. Louis's been posted. Because last hugging me. Again. Oh, Louis was drunk. Drunk in charge of a village. And if there's one thing the chief constable will not put up with, it's a policeman that can't have his drink. So Louis's been posted. To Gardenstown. Hogmanay and Gardenstown. You wouldn't wish out in your worst enemy. I wouldn't wish out in Graham's students. Well, I've been sent up for a to talk a grip of this place. 
But for just flashing lights, about Louis Buckingham never wore flashing lights. For what I hear, Louis was often lit up, but never by electricity. So this equipment is in perfect working order. In fact, all thing in the police station was in perfect working order. I don't think Louis liked that modern technology. In fact, his pencil and notebook is in tip-top condition. I've never seen a pencil with such a sharp point. And as for his notebook, completely blank, except for one mystery telephone number. What number would that be? 999. Do you ken whose number that might be? I've been dialing it all day and it's I engaged. Come on, Alec. You can have been after to, eh? I can't have the faces and I can't have the names, but... I've had enough of bad memory for numbers. Will, we'd better let you get on. I would better not had you back for directing the traffic. I mean, you could be in for a busy time. The school bus is due on Tuesday, the week after next. I wouldn't have bothered, Rover. That's near Christmas tree. Father will gang now, Alec. We'll hear what it's Charney Dove done, and I think we'll just gang in there. In fact, I can hear the music. I'd, I'd surely the Domini show enough again. <laughs> Last time, God, I didn't know. No, no, Leonard. I think you must have learned that from the boys in primary five. No, the girls in primary four. Oh, no, no, <laughs> Leonard. Come on, what, Karen? Karen's gone to give us the drunken piper. <laughs> went the Royal Academy of Music. Is that right? How long was she there, like? Four years. Four years to learn to play the drunken piper. I suppose we'd be there getting in, don't we? Eh? After all, it is open house again. Well, I hadn't been invited. Well, of course you hadn't been invited. It wouldn't be an open house if you had to be invited. I don't like gate crashing. Oh, Norman, you, you can't get crash an open house. I don't like going from there welcome. Oh, you'd be there to say that, Norman. Or you'd never go to your own house. Feels I'm there welcome there, either. Pass her in there anyway. What did you hell, Mr. Max? Did I folk Norman? Good, there's clad folk, there's rainy folk. And there's been Charlie Allen, who's. There's a lot of media folk. Media folk? Yeah. Far's media. I've been to clad, I've never been to media. Hello there, pal. And what do you think you're doing? Are you aware that under Octa Tora Bylaws, Section 14C is an offence to kick through folks' window without a licence? Have you got a licence? Yeah, I've got a driving licence and a wireless licence. We never got a TV licence, Alec. No, no I never got a TV licence. No, mind you, the TV seems to work fine on the wireless licence. And what about you, pal? I've got a dog licence, and we haven't got a dog. So you could say that licence is God's spare. So I've got a driving licence, a wireless licence and a dog licence. And none of them qualify you to look through folks' windows without the permission of the householder. And that is a fact. You never can what folk might be doing. They could be throwing their clothes off and indulging in lewd and libidinous practices of a provocative and sensual nature, which, if perpetrated in a public place, could constitute an offence. Go the road. <laughs>
Ah, oh, sorry, three lads working out of that noise. Surely you recognise that lads, Norman. That's a bucket thistle in midfield. See the land of the end there? See if he's doing with his fit? Aye. Uh, he tried out in a Huntley goal there last week and got sent off. Mechty me. Huh? You go down here, little man. How are you go? Well, look how much lads never had a bath in his life. It's awful quiet for Hogmanay. I just hope things will pick up a bit after closing time as usual. Mm -hmm. Well, here's to 1993. Well, I hope it's better than 1992. This recession has just about crippled the licence trade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, can, I can see that, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but it's my happy hour, you see. <laughs> for the next? No, for the whole year. <laughs> I just hope I'll still be in business next, Hogmanay, to have another happy hour. Because you see, boys, things is not good in this trade. In a time of recession, in a very rural and remote area like ours, the pubs and hotels are amongst the first to suffer. Our crofters, shepherds and gamekeepers, even the wealthy in our community, like the Bobby and the Minister, have very little money to spend. <laughs> and I've been losing money every day for several years. Although I've tried every trick in the trade to try and make a profit. With my ready, welcoming smile, a hail fellow well met, and a wee bit of sleight of hand, I can now take 45 naps into a standard bottle of whiskey. <laughs> and not even the customs and excise would notice it. And still I'm losing money. But here's a wee tip for you boys in case you're planning to come into the industry. I'm not a greedy man. Look, look, here's the measure for the malt. Look. Look, all you do is, it's all done by displacement, you see. Just leave a bit of your thumb inside the measure when you're pouring. It's no very hygienic, but very effective, and the whiskey will kill most of the bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> and still, I'm losing money. <laughs> now, using, using North Sea gas, connected directly to my beer kegs here, I can now serve a pint that is mostly froth, but is more hallucinogenic than the real thing. <laughs> and still I'm losing money. After a wee bit of mechanical alteration to the family planning machine in the gent's toilet, it now fires the coins through a hole in the wall at the back of the machine, down a series of chutes and into a bag in reception. <laughs> 
And you know this, boys, 95% of my customers, bless them, are still too charming and shy to admit they never got a packet. <laughs> And still, I'm losing money. <laughs> but you know this, boys, in the midst of my financial troubles, this is a great source of amusement to me, to see them coming out of the gents, faces all red with frustration, <laughs> knuckles bruised from hammering the machine. They'll gaze across at the object of their desire waiting for them in the lounge. And sometimes, do you know, overcome with emotion, they'll come up to the bar and ask me for a change of a fiver and go back for a second shot. <laughs> and still, I'm losing money. <laughs> and talking about money, boys, your round came to seven ninety-five. Seven ninety-five for twelve whiskies and water. And, and Shelley's losing, losing money. <laughs> My friends, I like to think that Jesus would have enjoyed an after a Hogmanay after a day with saw and plane. Because imagine, if you will, that he was an apprentice. They do serve this time with what he gave the joiner doing in Market Square there. Yeah? After the day's dark, he went off to the Glickets stack for a few pints with the lads. John and James and Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas who never could decide if he was going to hear an export or a lager. <laughs> yes, you see, my friends, Nazareth was a wee bit of like Achtertara. It didn't hear electricity either. However, unlike Achtertara, it did hear inside what it is. And it also had a sense of community, mm -hmm, of neighborliness, that kind of mutual self-support which is so characteristic of your one-horse dude at the back of beyond. Hello there, pal. Where are you going? Nina, your business. I won't stop harassing folk. Your name in Kirkcaldy now. Which may be a police state after Tara, isn't it? I've caught you again. Your conduct here is contrary to the Road Traffic Act and miscellaneous provisions after Tara, 1889, in that you are in charge of a vehicle, namely a bicycle, with knee brakes, knee lifts, two defective tyres, and a bell that doesn't work. But why do you care that? It's my bike. Well, far's Alex's bike? I had it towed a wall. It was causing an obstruction to innocent and, in many cases, paralytic pedestrians. You were about to take my bike. I have caught you. In flagrante delicto. Oh, name of your carcade, garlic. Caught in the act of fitting your leg out. I have gained a few the hill below. I've grazed the long park new. My bellies they have scattered, and I know stands my clue. I'm left here with my memories, scythe tap that small tree, and my horses was a hollow the things that used to be. I have pictures, I am distant. Barely fancy names. There's some hang in the parlour, adding up in gilded frames. But there's in that hangs among them, it's my favourite of them all. Just to do some fashion photo, the old folks on the wall. I've a pent in all a loman, I've buttons at the blue, some red deer on the hillside, and the greys at Waterloo. There's a moonrise in the gloaming, or some old historic hall, but somehow my eye I wonder stay, the old folks on the They'll see the Clydesdale swinging as they clatter up the close. The single men with bonnets off come in to get their bros. 
the cuddler's lonely scuttling by and the moor at evens far for oh, the memories crude and when I see the old folks on the wall I still hear my mother scolding when we tore our bedsicles, I still feel the old man's belt yet when we set the hell ablaze. But the long, long years have passed now since they both worked in our raw. I'll I reveal that treasure, oh, the old folks on the wall. It's just a deuce old fashioned photo. They are folks on the wall. Oh, thank you, Charlie. Look at all Watty. He aye greets when he hears you singing that. Ah, uh, he's just a uh, soft lump. Never, never. He's a music lover. Back to me. It's been nearly midnight. I do this time to do our part day piece. But far a domini, eh? Because we can make a start without him. He's not here yet. He's maybe not coming, and we want to hear the deed. Go and speak of the devil, Norman. A happy new year, Norman. Oh. <laughs> Alec. <laughs> well, are we all set? Well, I don't fancy singing. I don't care in my word. Come on, Norman. Let's just make a caramel out of my wheel. <laughs> well, are you enjoying yourself? Yeah! I'll soon put a stop to that. Oh, neither. <laughs> Surely Robbie's been working at Butlins. Oh. Right? Three chills you can offer well. Will, Norman, Alec, and the Domini, please take the floor. <laughs> The midnight bells have rung, a new year dawns in the northeast. And hope it springs eternal in the Achter Tara Priest. Here's hoping that this year the world gets better if it can. Here's hoping Salmon Rush takes his holidays to Iran. <laughs> Here's hoping Mr. Major's time to quaff a puppet jars. It's only him and me that wears my sack and side with drafts. <laughs> Here's hoping he gives Hazel time a job to make him proud. Like Minister of Transport, far you turns are near allowed. Oh, cheery folk, beery folk, godly folk and giddy folk. Off in you, but slide off in you, mucker and you dear. Cults folk, cooter folk, absolutely cooter folk. They are the folk in Scotland, there's a very good new year. Here's hoping that in Fedbar this year things start looking up. And Peter Heed or Devran Vale knock Rangers out of the cup. Here's hoping that the Prince of Wales keeps up his royal chin. 
Fa else is stuck with a job to learn with our backs at end. Here's hoping there's a night after a soap on Channel 4. And to play the part of the catchy deem, they fly Madonna hour. <laughs> Here's hoping hotel bedrooms get a mere excited look. And instead of Gideon's Bible, they provide Madonna's book. <laughs> Here's hoping that Bill Clinton can achieve Jack Kennedy's fame. He may be no Jack Kennedy, but his hobbies are the same. Here's hoping David Miller gives his hair a better comb. He might sign on for Chelsea while he scores away from home. Oh, oh cheery pop, cheery pop, God's a looking cheery pop. Pop the new beside of a new mucker and new deer. God's folk, good and folk. Absolutely perfect folk. They are the folk in Scotland. Here's a very good new year. The folk of Ahtatara wish you are a good new year. And what a debt I owe also to my elders. Particularly at communion time, to Bertie Willox, the grocer who provides the wine. Well, I wouldn't go so far to say it was weak, the wine that we get for Bertie, but you know the parable of our Lord turning the water into wine? Well, miracle of miracles, Bertie regularly turns the wine into water. As for the other part of the sacrament, the loaf, well, we get that from Sam Kennedy, the baker, of course. Well, 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 he usually gives this loaf, but it does rather depend on what he's got left in the shop when he closes on a Saturday after read. Last communion, I got a door, right? And the wife, the lady of the man, has got a bit of chocolate sponge. Well, she does not like chocolate sponge. So she had to do a swap with Frida Cooper, the butcher's wife, who'd got a meringue. Well, that was all bad enough, but the communion before that was even worse. The baker was away on his holidays. So I went to get the Italian ice cream shoppy, Capaldi's, and he got his wafers. So I wish you one and all a very happy and blessed new year. I do feel free at this time to move about the kirk and offer your own felicitations and greetings. Oh, well, please yourself. I didn't care about you, but I certainly propose bringing in the new year in the appropriate fashion. There once was a group of wild tearaways come roaring up through five years. Their leader's name was Dave. They were heading for a rave in a park half a mile outside O'Reilly. <laughs> They'd come biking over the moor at a hundred mile an hour on their way to the rave up at Rainy O. The leader of the gang, his hair was dark and lang. I wouldn't say he looked like a monkey, oh, but one fewer chromosome and the trees would be his home. There were hunters there like him that nicked at Friday, oh. Fit a racket, fit a din, and the locals all joined in. Joe Bruce thought Dave, the leader, would be friendly. Jokes like asses, jockey gays, your crack. Dave was quick to answer back. The crack of wood would knock good half for Rainey O. Cause they'd come biking over the moor at a hundred mile and moor on their way to the rave up at Rainey O. An aura man, Jim Watt, thought he'd try a soppy pot. And then he got on the reef for the bottom. The stumer come to grief, smoking reefers on the reef. <laughs> he fell off and nearly ended up in casualty <laughs> But his luck was in indeed, cause he landed on his head. 
So he didn't do himself on the injury Dodge strike and make folk sick Passing around the cinnamon stick He'd kept in the attic since the forties old Twenty folk got high eating steak and mushroom pie The mushrooms is magic out at rainy Now earlier this year, folk flew in for far and near To a rave at the Rolling Stones at Wembley Oh, Mick Jagger did his tricks, God he even split his bricks <laughs> But Wembley was not half as good as Riney Oh, I Mick Jagger did his tricks, God he even split his bricks but when they was the near as good as Riney Oh, I the rave they had done there was a Sunday school affair compared with a rave up here at Riney Hello, who's there? This is Achter Tara 213. Hi there, it's me. How are things in Achter Tara? In the post office across the square. Is there still the Thursday morning queue of old folk who cash their pensions there? Things have changed in Achtertara. We've got rural deprivation here, and the post office that once you prized has been rationalised, and it was closed last year. Is the chemist always open any hour of night or day? We well, haven't had a chemist since last May. And bathe my coins are in the family way. Is John Wilson still the doctor? Well, we're here now, got our doctor now. And the surgery's a craft shop run by an English man with a great big plum in his mouth. And the bank? Trusty Clydesdale. Gone. What? That's a sin. So what do people keep their money in? 
Well, Abdi has to have a biscuit tin. Things have changed in Achter Tara. But does the train still wind its way? Leaving Rainy just on nine o'clock and reaching Achter Tara by midday. There's no trains to Achter Tara. Dr. Beeching fairly saw it is that. So you really need a motor car to travel far because the buses have, here's the laugh in it, been enough in And the hospital? Converted into 30 timeshare flats. It was bulldozed, leaving just the vestibule. On the very day the council closed the school. Rural services are going. And the powers that be didn't seem to care. The phone is all that's left to go. Hello, hello. Achter Tara, are you there? <laughs> Come on, Angela, it's your shotty. My shotty? Aye, it's your turn to do a party piece. But I didn't know. Nobody told me. I'm telling you no. Oh, well, if you insist. I did play Hamlet at school. I could do my soliloquy. Well, that's fine. Why do you want to do it, we? Uh, no. Oh, fit a pity. That's a bell. We have no time for it. That's our first fit. Oh, how exciting. It's wonderful being part of these primitive rituals. I do love these old Scottish customs. They're so... Old, aren't they? Oh, happy New Year to you, Constable. Oh, a policeman for a first boot. Well, he should be tall, dark and handsome. Nothing would a three failed in all counts. A very happy New Year to you all. That's just by the by. I have to take you all up to the hall. I've just had the news on my walkie-talkie that the regional convener, Councillor Swick, is on his way to make a very special announcement. How about you'll hear your New Year before you again, Constable? No, no. No, no, never well on duty. Unless it's a single malt. Good. You'll have a wee one. No, no, no. I'll hear a large one. Now, there's mere news coming through. It seems the councillor is getting closer. The official car has just come through passport control at Kenethman. Mickney may be another half an hour yet. A hell of a hour if he takes a shortcut. So, you've plenty of time to do your party piece like everybody else. Aye, join in. Then I'll be so miserable. No, no chance, Paul. That's no my line of business. No. Police regulations section 47 subsection C says a policeman whilst on duty should refrain from singing, humming, whistling, yodeling, tap, clog, Cossack, Morris, disco or dirty dancing. So, have you been a bobby? No, 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 no. I used to work in Dundee. I worked on Captain Scott's ship, the Discovery. I used to advise the tourists and talk the money. Then I got a job on the Tay Road Brig, advising motorists to cross by the railway brig. Aye, the first thing. And I used to talk their money. And then I became a Dundee district councillor. I just took the money. <laughs> oh, come on. This is Dr. Dara. It's Hogmanay the Nacht. You're in a duty-free area. You must be able to do something, recite, sing. Oh, for Ronnie favour. We're not going to let you off. That's right. We are the masters now. Well, I just came the one song. It's a voting ballad cried, Nitty Tom. Oh, mercy, that's my favourite. <laughs> I was only ten year old, I left the village squeal. My feeder feed me to the maze to air my milk and meal. From first I put on my narrow breaks to hot my spinal drums. And buckle through to my knob and knees, a pair of nugget tops. Oh, for goodness sake, what's all that about? I couldn't make out a word. Oh, is that Gaelic? If that was Gaelic, I'd be getting a grunt. <laughs> it's just... 
We find it very difficult to understand what people are saying in Scotland. We can't even understand Eddie May and Jackie Bird. Oh, don't worry what it all means. I'll explain it to you as we go along. In fact, you've just got to imagine the policeman as a young poet singing of his life and roots in a primitive agricultural community. Oh. Shall we begin again? Philly. When I was only ten years old, I lived the village square. The poet regrets that he did not have the benefits of comprehensive education. <laughs> my feeder feed me tater means to earn my milk and meal. The poet's father launches him on a career in agriculture. From first my toy man never breaks the cart my spinal trams. For his working clothes, the poet favours a pair of designer jeans. <laughs> I'd buck it through my canoven knees, a pair of naggy tops and in the interests of hygiene, hitches them up round the lower part of the leg below the knee. Thus, with a piece of suitable material purchased perhaps from Austin Reed or the bracelet department of Ratmus. A cooked in bonnie on a new rough town since catchy dim. The poet becomes aware of his awakening sexuality. She is five and forty, and I am at seventeen. The poet speaks of his Oedipus complex. She clapped some muggle piece to me with different kind of jobs. The relationship brings to his diet a welcome supplement of glucose, vitamin C, and carbohydrate. I really turns her on for die between my nuggy Evidence here of the garment's erotic properties. <laughs> so when we get wed and get to our bed, we'll never talk off for twice. I'll keep on my nuggy tops and she'll keep on our stays. <laughs> I had a good next year of a pair of new gym jobs. You'll never get your pajamas off if you're wearing nuggy tops. The poet and his enamorata evolve an infallible method of contraception. <laughs> oh, you gotta get your pajamas off, for you're wearing a gate off. Wait, and you lot up to the hall to hear the convener's speech. I'll walk the glick at Stirk, ruined up the minister and the rest of the village. Dogs you the rabbit. Straight through, Mr. Convener. Never mind the bouncer. Why do I not get a bogey? Nana, you're not getting a body search. Obdy Kane's a council would never travel without the hip flask. Through you go. All right, dagger. There's no need to give away our secrets. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today is a big night for Achter Turra. The sands of time has run out for the old year. It has came to the end of its journey. It has hit its shotty. It has shot its bolt. <laughs> and now we are standing at the crossroads, waiting on the threshold of a new year, for which a few short moments ago, the starting pistol gave the green light for which. <laughs> now, my friends, I have come here straight from a working high tea huh? with two or three heat bombers for the Scottish office. And after a full and frank discussion and exchange of views, we reached a consensus 
that the sausage and egg was fine, but the scones was a bit stale. <laughs> huh? Now, me being here in ACT is an example of hands-on government at its best. Here am I, the regional convener, taking the time, trouble, and 12 quid attendance money. <laughs> Come out here, in the middle of Newai. Well, it's near the middle, it's much further out than that. <laughs> But that's what I'm here about, because it's just come up in the Brussels computer that Achter Tara is the most isolated, remote, and backward community in the whole of Europe. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and that includes Glasgow. Huh? Oh, but that's what I'm here about, because it's because of that that Achter Tara has qualified for a remote area subsidy. Now, you are can, you are can for set aside is, you can, for, it means, it means that Jockey Bruce at Dolly Scatterty gets paid a fortune for growing a field of jobby nettles. <laughs> <laughs> well, under this new set of subsidies, the hell after Tara is being set aside. <laughs> huh? So, Abadi that bides in the village is being paid a fortune for doing nothing. Oh yes, all public services are being restored and the school when I hit a close. It will be fully staffed and serviced. But never with the kind of inspector that came to the school last week. I don't think anyone of you met him, but this boy, somebody with the primary school testing, he goes straight into the classroom, he says to Wheeloo in the front, you there, he says, give me a number between 10 and 100. And the wee boy says, 72. The inspector writes the blackboard, 27. Turns round, looking for some reaction, no reaction. So he says to the wee girl beside him, you give me a number. And she says, 83. So he writes up on the blackboard, 38. Still no reaction. So he gets the loan at the back of the class, the very top of the class. And he says to him, you give me a number. And he says, 55. Oh. Yeah, yeah. 55, he says. See if we can make an ass of that in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that small boy was very light after Tara. Nothing much to tell him, nothing to look at, but nay to be mucked about. A good new year to you all. It's hard to believe it's another new year. It's hard to believe we're in 93. And look in our heed if there's anything clear. Achter Tara is the place to be. It's the place to be in 1993. Poor village Achter Tara, although it is expanding, it's hardly Edinburgh, it's littler than Lunfanen. Never nay hassle and never nay sweat. Never nay payment or the poll tax yet. Never nay streets with double yellow lines. Never nay wardens and never nay fires. Oh, please, 